Hi, and welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. I've been making the point today that there is a silver lining in this cloud yesterday. We've got a clearly identified leader of the conservative movement, and that is Senator Ted Cruz, the Hispanic American senator from the state of Texas, clearly identified now unmistakably as the leader of the conservative movement. We have 162 members of Congress that did not bow the knee to bail last night. Remember, Elijah thought he was in it all by himself. I alone am left. And God says, no, you're not. I've got 7,000 that have not bowed the knee to bail. We've got 162 in Congress that have not bowed the knee to bail. So way too soon uh, to think about uh, uh, to think about giving up. And we've got this catastrophic failure of Obamacare. That's also in our corner. I and mean, that's a campaign issue all by itself because conservatives obviously are the ones that have fought this thing all the way along. 888-589-8840 is the number to call if you would like to join the uh, conversation uh, having some computer problems here so if I occasionally appear to be a little bit distracted at points it's because I'm trying to work with a bulky computer anyway uh, and all is not lost even though you got a lot of crowing from the Democrats Chuck Schumer it's all over we won they lost here's a piece by Peter Beinert on the Daily Beast this is another winger left uh, website the Daily Beast and he says the shutdown is a Republican victory. That's the way he presents this thing. The me And this guy's a leftist. So he says the meme out there is that the Republicans lost. They got their clock cleaned. They, they got their uh, clock plowed. Uh, they got their hats handed to them. And this is this not the case. Because you look at the overall picture of where President Obama is at with his agenda. He says, number one, it's Obama's going to probably have to accept the sequester cuts. This is a lower baseline for the federal budget. Probably going to have to accept the sequester cuts as a basis for future budget negotiations. So the Republicans actually got President Obama to agree not to a cut. They're not budget cuts. It's just a reduction in the rate of government spending growth. So he's going to have to accept that. That's a loss for Obama. Uh, his chances of passing any significant progressive legislation have receded, says Peter uh, Beinert. Gun control is dead. Remember, they thought they had that one locked in. 90% of the American people are with us. They lost. They cannot get gun control through its dead in the water. By the way, I saw a story on uh, Russia. Russia has nine guns per every 100 people. You know how many guns we have per every 100 people? In America, we have 100. We have 100 guns for every 100 American people. That's basically one-to-one. -one. Now, not everybody has them, and... Some people own more than one. But the point is, there's 100, million, there's 100 guns for every 100 citizens. There's only nine guns for every 100 citizens in Russia. And their homicide rate, their murder rate, through the use of handguns, is multiple times what it is in the United States. I don't remember exactly what the figure was, but it's way, way higher than the homicide rate in the United States. So as, as research and history indicates, more guns, less crime. Always has been the case, always will be the case. More guns, less crime. So gun control is dead. Immigration reform looks unlikely. In fact, uh, Raul Labrador, a friend of mine from Idaho, he said because of the shutdown and the nasty way that Obama behaved, immigration reform is dead. He says, we're done with that. We are not going to send anything over to the Senate because they'll just chew it up. They'll cob it up, turn it into something that we don't recognize. This thing goes over to the Senate. They'll send it to conference. We'll get a bill back that we could not stomach. So, so according to Raul Labrador, who's the leader in the House of Representatives on immigration, immigration reform is dead. Now, President Obama is going to try to get this thing through, so we're going to have to rise up and stop that, but we're going to have an ally in Raul Labrador. And you think of the other things that Obama was pushing, climate change legislation, nothing happened with that. Infrastructure investment, nothing happened with that. We learned from the stimulus, no more of that. Universal preschool, that's not going anywhere. Voting rights protections, the uh, Civil Rights Act was actually overturned, and uh, voter ID is being protected by the courts. Boost to the minimum wage, can't get anywhere with that. So his legislative agenda has pretty much been stopped uh, in its tracks. And furthermore, according to, um, let's see, this is uh, Gallup, I believe, no, Rasmussen, the number of U.S. voters who feel the country is heading in the right direction has fallen to the lowest level of the Obama presidency. 13% of likely U.S. voters now say the country is heading in the right direction. Just 13%, 80% of 
think it's heading in the wrong direction, including 91% of Republicans and 85% of independents. So if, if the precious independents are what you're looking for, Republicans have fields are ripe under harvest, 85% of independents unaffiliated think this thing, this country's going in the wrong uh, direction. And predictably, the networks have blamed the GOP for the shutdown. There were 41 broadcast news stories on the broadcast networks, 41 of them. This is ABC, CBS, NBC from September 17 through October 15. 41 stories. Uh, well, let's see how many, uh, if that's exactly. Yeah, 41. Well, here, here's the deal. 41 stories blamed the Republicans for the shutdown, and none of them, zero, nada, blamed the Democrats. 17 blamed both sides. So you got 58 stories. 41 of them blame the Republicans outright. None of them blame the Democrats. Zero, zip, nada. 17 said both parties are at fault. So you wonder why the great unwashed out there, the low information voters, you wonder why they have such a jaundiced view, such a distorted view, such an er erroneous view of who's at fault in these cases. Well, that is the reason they're getting their information from sources that are hopelessly and helplessly uh, biased. Let's grab a um, soundbite before we go to the phones. Uh, Rob, let's grab clip number three. This is Steve King on last night with Megan Kelly talking about the fact that, look, all is not lost. This budget showdown, yeah, maybe the Republican, the conservative side lost, but there is a bright side to all this. Here's Representative Steve King from Iowa. After all has been said and done, what was accomplished by the Tea Party caucus and those who voted no tonight? Well, you know, it is sometimes look on the bright side, and that, that's what I'm responding to here. The bright side is this, that I think we've identified 20 to 30, maybe more strong conservatives here in the House of Representatives that are, have now gelled into a team. It's probably bigger than that when you look at uh, some others, maybe 70 or 80 altogether. We hadn't been in that place where we did those meetings, had those dinners, talked, and really related in this way before. So I think that will pay dividends over the long run. I've watched as there's a core of effective conservative senators that have made their mark also. Now, it may not be their best night tonight, but they have a national presence, and I think we'll be able to gel together and move a more conservative, fiscally responsible agenda. And that's, that's the bright side of this. So there's a bright side. He says, look, we are coalescing. We've got a, we've got a core of genuinely committed conservatives now in the House. We're meeting together. We're talking. We're strategizing. We weren't doing that before, so that's another good thing that's come out of this, you're getting a core now of committed conservatives that are, are, are going to be active on conservative issues in the House. Now, clip four is Ted Cruz talking about the, this deal being an absolutely terrible deal for the American people. Clip four, let's listen. This is a lousy deal for the American people. This is sadly a classic instance of the Washington establishment selling the American people down the river. This deal does nothing for the millions of people who are hurting because of Obamacare. For all the young people coming out of school right now who can't find a job because of Obamacare, this deal does nothing. For all the single moms being forced into part-time work trying to feed their kids on 29 hours a week, this deal does nothing. For all of the seniors and people with disabilities right now being told, getting letters in the mail, that they're losing their health insurance, this deal does nothing. It is an unfortunate instance of the Washington establishment, once again, not listening to the American people. So but Ted Cruz said, look, this is a lousy deal. This is an atrocious piece of legislation. And again, it could only happen because John Boehner brought it to the floor over the objections of his own caucus. But Ted Cruz said, look, there are some good takeaways from the showdown. Clip five, let's listen. I mean, the last two months, and it's worth for everyone watching this to, to have a word of encouragement. What we've seen over the last two months has been incredible. We saw millions of Americans come together, over two million Americans sign a national petition at DontFundIt.com, light up the phones here at the Capitol. We saw the House of Representatives stand strong, listen to the people, and stand strong against Obamacare. And sadly, as you just noted, what we then saw was Senate Republicans not unite but be divided. If Senate Republicans had united and supported House Republicans, supported the American people, we could have had a very different outcome. But instead, Senate Republicans divided and, in fact, actively and aggressively attacked House Republicans, attacked the effort to defund Obamacare, and, and that's what led to the lousy deal we had tonight. So Ted Cruz said, look, there's a lot of upside here. We, the, the, the base was galvanized over the last couple of months. Two million people signed the petition, melting down the phone, phone lines to D.C. 
Republicans initially stood, stood firm, voted unanimously to defund Obamacare. Well, let's go to the phones. Let's go to James, Camden, Tennessee. James, thanks for calling. Thanks for waiting. What's on your mind? Yeah, um, well, first thing I'd like to make a comment on is the Tea Party. As far as I'm concerned, the Tea Party is the only hope the Republicans have. I'm a, a 70-year-old moderate independent, and uh, for the most part, for the last 60 years, I pretty much feel that the Republican parties have been a waste of time and space. But uh, the Tea Party has actually given me a little bit of hope that something could give back in, even though I'm not particularly a, a, a you know, as conservative, I've been a moderate my whole life, but um, um, the Tea Party is at least a hope for the Republican Party to come back and be something again. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Ted Cruz, I, I, I really like him, uh, but I think uh, if you guys try and make it a conservative-only movement, you're going to lose 40% of the voting population you need because the Moderates constitute the, the plurality of the voting uh, public. So you got to make sure that you work in, over the next, even, uh, even from now, you got to work to broaden his base because if he's conservative only, uh, you're not going to get the 10% of the Democratic Party you need to win. Well, you know, I don't know if I agree with that analysis, James, because, you know, we've tried it the way that you're suggesting with John McCain. In 2008, he was a guy that really aimed to the center. He aimed to be moderate. We were told this is the guy you got to have to win. And millions of conservatives simply stayed home. And by the same people, we're told Mitt Romney's the guy you got to have. He's electable. He's not conservative. He's not going to run off all the people that are at the center. He's a perfect guy. He's moderate, not extreme on social issues. He's the guy you got to have. And five or six million Americans simply stayed home. Uh, because Mitt Romney gave them nothing to get excited about. So I think the reality is I think you got a lot of people out there. You know, and, 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 and frankly, we have not tried a genuine conservative since 1984. And we, we don't know what it, what it would look like, you know, to have, James, to have a genuine conservative running for the presidency because we haven't had one since Ronald Reagan ran the second time. You know, and we saw what Steve Lonigan did in New Jersey. He didn't win, but he scared the living daylights out of Cory Booker in a hardcore blue state. Came within 10 points of Cory Booker by running as an unabashed, unashamed uh, conservative. So I think we can win. I think those moderates, if you have somebody can articulate conservatism, moderates will say, you know, I'm really a conservative. I just hadn't thought about it, hadn't realized it till just now. Focal Point, AFR Talk.